I'm Phil Helmuth. For many players, managing a small stack at a tournament table can be a scary and frustrating experience. Yeah, yeah. But it doesn't have to be. When you're sitting on a short stack, you don't have many options, which means your decisions actually become easier. In this lesson, we're going to walk you through some of the basics of short stack strategy and help you learn how to make the most out of your remaining chips. The first thing you need to know about short stack play is when you're actually sitting on a short stack. Most players start worrying about a short stack when they have between 15 and 20 big blinds in their stack. And at 10 big blinds or less, you are most definitely a short stack. With 15 or fewer big blinds left in your stack, you essentially have one move available. All in, baby. All you can eat, baby. Of course, this doesn't mean you should put your chips into the middle with just any two cards. To make the most of your remaining chips in this situation, you should look for high percentage spots, which means you should be pushing from late position whenever possible. Hold on. I'm going to add a little something to this lesson here. A lot, of the, a lot of the math guys have determined, guys like, you know, David Shoskotsky, the Maven, you got Brandon Cantu. These guys have, you know, kind of figured out some of the math in poker. It's very interesting. A lot of the young guns on the Internet have done some research, and, and I kind of enjoy learning about that. And one of the things they've come up with is when you have about 20 big blinds and someone raises it up, and now you're either in the big blind, small blind button, or one off the button, you can move in with king, nine, or better. Now, I'm not just going to subscribe to that theory blindly. I may do it on the internet, but I'm going to try to look at whether I think the other person is strong or weak or not. Uh, a lot of these guys also believe if you have 15 big blinds and you're in late position with queen, nine suited, two fours, king, nine, uh, or any ace, you should just ship it. They say this is the unexploitable all-in. And... You know, I mean, there's some reason to this. I mean, you're picking up, you know, if you're moving in with 15 big blinds, you're picking up around, you know, two big blinds, two and a half big blinds, and actually, yeah, two, two and a half big blinds considering the ante. So it's very interesting that such sheer aggression can pay off. However, I'm never going to teach you to do this without trying to take a read on somebody. If you're on the Internet, that's fine. Let's get back on script. More important than position, however, is timing. Unless you're holding a monster hand like aces, kings, queens, ace, king, you should be always trying to be the person that's moving all in. Not the caller, not the original raiser. You want to get it all in. Remember, fold equity, and by the way, fold equity is when someone raises and you re-raise them and make them fold. Fold equity in any stages of a tournament is more important than the quality of your hand and since your opponents need a strong hand to call when you move all in, you should be the one putting them to a decision. All in, baby, whenever possible. When your stack is a little larger, say between 15 and 25 big blinds, you should be looking for spots when you can re-raise all in after someone else has made an initial raise. Again, looking for spots in late position or after a loose opponent has made the original raise in order to make this play as profitable as possible. When you are not moving all in or re-raising all in, be careful to avoid playing speculative hands like 8-9 suited, 9-10 suited, 10-jack suited in hopes of hitting a monster flop. Playing these kinds of hands with a short stack puts too many of your chips at risk. Also, be careful about calling off your short stack with something like a small pair as your best case scenario is that you're in a race with a hand like ace-queen or ace-king or king-queen suited. Moving all in with small pairs is fine. Calling with small pairs, not so good. Finally, remember that you should never just give up because you're short stacks. With blinds and annies, it only takes a few double-ups to turn a short stack into a large one. And I've had times in my life, well, one time in particular, I was down to 300 in chips. The blinds were 50 and 100. One of the people at my table left the room. He went broke just then. He came back about four hours later and I had stacks, of, literally stacks of chips, 35, 40,000 in a World Series of Poker Tournament. And he said, what the heck happened? And I thought, I never give up, baby.